Hi everybody, good afternoon to all of you. I hope you had a wonderful week uh, since last week. Um, of course, th this is a midweek Bible study that we are um, studying the Bible together with. And I hope that today, and I pray that today, you would receive uh, powerfully from God. Today we're going to be talking about faith and unbelief, which is actually a continuation from last week. Last week we spoke about what faith is. Okay, what faith is. So today we're going to be talking about what is, why is faith so important to us? Why is faith so important to you and to me? Okay, let's read some scriptures. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 11 says this, With this in mind, we constantly pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and that by his power he may bring to fruition your every desire for goodness and your every deed prompted by faith. I want you to focus on that last phrase where it says every deed prompted by faith. Okay. So today when we talk about what faith, why faith is so important, it is so important because faith is the power of God to lead you to do something. Okay. To do something which in return will bring uh, miraculous results. That's what faith is for. Faith is for believing God to the point where you actually do something about what you are believing. That's why it says that every deed prompted by faith. So faith will always move you into action. So if you're not moving into action over the most difficult things in your life, over the impossible situations in your life through faith, then faith is not truly operating in your life. Okay, You're probably in unbelief or you're probably uh, assuming that things are going to change just because you wanted to. Um, but in the end, it will never change because wishing doesn't have any power behind it. Only faith does. Faith in God does. Okay, So faith is important and faith is extremely necessary for us as Christians. Why? Because it will move us to action. It will lead us to a place where we actually do something in faith, okay? Not just to do anything, but to do something in faith, believing that God is moving, okay? With this power. John chapter 14, verse 12, it says, Verily, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me, will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to my Father. Notice where he says, I, they will do even greater works than these, okay? Why and how are they going to do these greater works? Well, it says right here in the beginning, because they believe in me, which is faith, right? So, when you believe in him, that will lead you to the greater works <laughs> or to works. It's as simple as that. So if you are not working, in this case here, what was the working that he was referring to? The works that Jesus began. What are the works that Jesus began? Healings, signs and wonders, preaching the gospel and people believing him, okay? casting out demons, um, seeing the supernatural intervene in the natural, you know, the, like the multiplication of the fish and the bread, uh, the, the, the fishing of the coin, the, the withered hand made whole. So all these were supernatural interventions, okay? Uh, the move of God, per se, because of the power of God behind the faith that Jesus walked in. And then Jesus says, you know, these works that I have been doing because of my faith, <laughs> you are going to do also. But look at the emphasis. The emphasis, uh, the emphasis here is two things. First, you have to believe. And then after believing, that's when the works will follow. And the kind of works, of course, again, what we're talking about here are the miraculous, okay? The move of God in the miraculous, okay? So that's what's missing in some of our lives, okay? Not the works, but the believing that will lead us to the works. 
Amen. See, a lot of times we put efforts into the work. We try to resolve things. We try to make things happen. We try to pump things up, pump things up, and and try to produce results in our strength. Okay, um, and that is not what the Bible teaches us to do. The Bible teaches us to start with faith. Start with believing. And then as you believe, okay, it's going to lead you to do, okay? And we know how you can get to the, to the place where you believe. It's by meditation in the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So you need to stop and listen and re-listen and listen again and keep listening to the scriptures, to the Word of God, through studying, through hearing somebody else preach. But all of that will allow the Word to take root into your heart. And the end result will be biblical faith. Amen? The God kind of faith. And when that faith takes root, it's going to lead you and empower you to do something. And in that doing, you're going to see the power of God behind it because faith is operating. Okay? You know, what did James say? James said, faith without works is dead. Okay? Faith, in other words, faith will be accompanied by its works. So you can't see faith, you know, per se, but you can see the results of faith. Amen. <laughs> so when somebody says, I have faith, I, my response will be, great, but I can't see it until you do something that reflects the faith that you have. Amen. <laughs> 1 Thessalonians 1.3 says this, We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, your work produced by faith. So work here comes because faith is producing that work. Okay? Faith is producing that work. So that leads us to, to believe that we need to focus more on building that faith. <laughs> Amen. Building that faith. And as we build that faith, there's going to be um, something produced in our lives. And that something is works that accompany uh, that faith. Okay. Galatians 3, 2, I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Okay. Even the Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit, and what we receive in salvation and every other experience with the Holy Spirit that He pours into our lives, okay, comes by what? By believing what you have heard. So the work of God in us through the Spirit is also... Um, produced by the believing of having heard the Word of God. You know, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So if you want to see the Holy Spirit move more in your life in ways that you only dream of, then what you need is more faith. <laughs> and you can get more faith through the Word of God. Okay? It's as simple as that. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 to 17 says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you be rooted and established in love. Okay. Notice that Christ will dwell. That doesn't mean you're going to get saved or be more saved. It talks about the, his influence, his indwelling influence in your life. Okay. You ever see people say, I'm full of Jesus? Well, that's his influence, his dwelling influence in their soul, in their hearts. Okay. And that will increase in measure by the degree that your faith also increases. Okay. So... There's really nothing that you will experience from God, okay, in the way of His power, you know, and even in the miraculous, unless faith is operating, you know. And but the good news about faith is that even faith is not something that you have to work at, you know, and and, and strive over, you know, because faith, you know, in a nutshell, is a gift. God has given us faith as a gift, 
You know, the day you got saved, you got saved because you heard the word. The word is a gift. All, it's all a gift. And because you opened your heart and you, and, and, and you allowed Jesus to come into your life, okay, that made you and turned you into a whole new being. And that all came about because of the gift of faith that God gave to you, handed it to you, and you took it. So that principle is the same in all of your walk with Christ, you know, from beginning to the end. If you ever want to see God do greater things in greater measure, then it's going to take time. You're going to have to take time with Him and His Word to build a faith that will produce the works that will follow. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So what I'm saying is this. Get close to Jesus as much as you can. Study His Word, and that is a way you get close to Jesus. Study His Word, pray, and you're going to see your faith explode. Okay, And you're going to find yourself believing and doing things that you thought you never could do. Trusting God for things you thought you could never trust. Fear will be gone. Insecurity, anxiety will be no longer in your life. And you're going to see the power of God moving mightily in your life. Okay? So this faith, faith is so important. Why? Because it produces works in your life. Works that brings results. I like to say it like this. It is the switch that turns the power of God on. It is the switch that turns the power of God on operating system to live the Christian life. You know, you start this way. You started one day by believing Him and trusting Him for your salvation through faith. Amen? And the way you began is the way you will continue through faith. Okay? Through faith, you're going to see more and more of God moving in your life, producing works that will follow. Okay? Faith always has its focus on Christ, okay? You can't get faith in any other place except Christ, not the biblical faith, okay? Um, the only way that faith is going to be there and grow and measure is as we go to Christ, to Jesus, for that faith, beginning in our salvation and continuing all the way through the end of your life. That's how you do it. So the moment you stop doing that, the moment you stop going to Christ for your faith, to increase in your faith, your faith will not grow. It'll stay in stagnation. So this is key, okay? Faith, biblical faith, has its focus on Christ. Amen? And it is, it is what produces God's work in our lives or the work of God in us. You know, Jesus wants us to produce his works. You know, Jesus desires that God will move even even greater measure in our hearts through faith. That's his desire. That's what he wants from us, okay? And he has made it so simple for us. So simple that sometimes we forget it or we miss it, okay? It's just spending time in scripture. Have you noticed how Satan will do everything that he can to keep you from reading and studying the Word of God? Did you notice how much he will try to keep you from even praying? Because prayer is your lifeline to God. How many, have you noticed how he'll try to use everything under the sun to try to remove you from that place in the Word of God, from studying the Word of God? He'll use busyness of life, telephone calls, uh, things that you have to search on the internet. He'll use even uh, hunger. Oh, now I can't study. I'm too hungry. I need to make me some lunch or some dinner. He'll use um, unexpected things that come your way. He will try to keep you so busy that you don't have time for the Word. Why? Because He knows that once you start studying the Word and getting into it, your faith is going to grow. And once your faith starts to grow, that is his defeat right there. That is his defeat. So don't listen to Satan. Be careful with his schemes. Take your time to study the Word of God, for in doing so, 
you're going to find yourself doing things, believing God for things that you thought you could never do. Okay? It's through faith that we receive the Spirit. You want more of the Holy Spirit in your life? You want more of His power, His influence? It's also through faith. Okay? It's through faith that we, that Christ lives in our hearts. Okay? It's through faith. He's there. And we, the more we believe that He is there, the more influence that He's going to have over us. Okay? And faith is the highest dependency that we can have with God. Okay. So we want to focus on this part of faith, which is the works part. Okay. This is this is crucial in our faith because a lot of people have faith to believe for their salvation, but they don't have faith to believe for something else. Okay. They only believe up to salvation, but nothing else. When God wants us to believe for more. Remember what Jesus said, the works that I have done you will do also, but the key to those works is to believe in Him. If we believe in Him, okay, we're going to do His works, okay? So we need to focus and we need to um, concentrate on believing in Him and continually believing in Him, not just for salvation, but believing that He is good and He wants us to give us everything else in our salvation. Amen? I want to share with you a scripture that I've been meditating on this week. It's Mark chapter 11, verse 24. It says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Now this is a scripture that perhaps many of you have heard before. But as I was meditating on it, I saw something that I haven't seen before in this scripture. Notice what it says. Believe, believe that you have received it. Okay, believe that you have received it. So the believing, of course, comes from faith. The receiving, okay, the receiving requires the power of God or the work of God. Because only God can bring about the things that we're believing Him for. <laughs> Amen? So the emphasis here is the believing. The believing that you have received it. Amen. So God wants us, when it comes to trusting in Him and believing in Him for the, for the works that we can do, God wants us to have faith that we have received it. Amen. <laughs> so if we're not receiving it, then there is no faith involved. There really isn't any faith involved, okay? Because true faith leads you to receive now when you believe, okay? So faith doesn't speak like this. Oh, tomorrow I'll see it. Tomorrow I'll have someday I'll have it. I pray, but whenever it comes, it comes. No, that's not how faith operates. As the Bible says, believe that you have received it. So receiving is very much part of of the believing okay so and the receiving is part of the works that we're talking about because in order for you to say I receive it okay that is your heart taking action into something that you are believing God for amen <laughs> that's also considered works so the emphasis here okay is on the believing and once you believe then you will not see it, but receive it. And when you receive it, then you'll see it. Amen? But you will never be able to receive it unless the believing comes first. Amen? So faith is crucial. Faith releases the power of God. Um, faith uh, leads you to do great works for God. Faith leads you to um, expect things great from God. And I think one of the most precious of all is faith leads you to a place where you actually receive what you are believing. That's powerful. And that's how we get our healing. That's how we get our, our miracles. That's how we see the move of God in our lives. Okay. 
is by believing. And maybe this is something that you haven't um, practiced. Maybe you've been doubtful and, and, and worried about many things and, and complained that you haven't seen God move in your life or, or answered your prayers um, in a long time. Well, maybe this is your answer. Maybe it's because you haven't been praying in faith. <laughs> maybe because you've been trusting in what you can do and not what God can do. You know, what, what the Lord wants from you is that you would believe. And then when you believe, you receive it like you have it. Amen. That's what he wants you to do. Okay. So focus on the believing. You know, study the scripture. Find the scriptures that support what you want to believe God for. Meditate on it until it registers, until it's planted into your heart. And then you're going to see that the receiving <laughs> is going to be simple. Why? Because you are standing on his word. And nothing will deter you from that. Okay? Once it's firmly planted into your heart. And then receiving is going to be easy. And then you're going to talk like you have it. And you're not going to allow anything contrary to that to try to discourage you. So receiving comes after you believe. And the focus must be on the believing. Once the believing is there, the receiving will be produced naturally in your heart. So maybe there's something in your life that you haven't seen God uh, move in your life. Maybe there's something you've been believing God for you haven't seen in a long time. Maybe there's a lot of things that you would like to see changed in your life. Well, it all begins with you. Okay? Stop focusing on what you can do to change. Of course, there's some things that you can just um, change in your life. But there's other things that it would require the, the power of God, the works of God, okay? Like you can't change people, okay? You can't change people's decisions and hearts. You can't force people. But God can touch their hearts. God can move circumstances and situations and, 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 and move in their lives, okay? But the first change that has to take place is not what you would like to see change. First change that has to take place is the change of your heart. Go back to faith. Go back to believing. Go back to believing because that's going to lead you straight to the receiving. And once you receive, that's it. You got it. <laughs> you got what you have requested God to do in your life. So it all comes with the believing. So believing Faith is powerful because it leads you to do something. It leads you to great and mighty works. Amen? So that's today's lesson. Uh, next week, uh, we're going to be talking about what are the barriers of faith. What are the barriers of faith? Well, there's a couple of them, and we need to talk about that. But that will be next Wednesday, and I hope to see you here again. Same time, okay, 730. God bless you. And let me say and pray a prayer, a quick prayer for you um, before, uh, before you go. Father, we thank you today for every listener. We thank you, Father, that you've given us the power to believe and to receive. You've given us the power, Father, to do great and mighty works because of our faith, Lord. And I pray that, Father, my audience today will not focus on the works, but focus on their faith. And we see today, as your word teaches, as they focus on building their faith, the works will follow. Powerful works that brings results. So I pray that their focus will be on your word, which produces faith. Thank you for giving them the time necessary to listen to the word today. Also building their faith, and I pray that you would Father, remind them as well of next week so that they can continue allowing the Holy Spirit to build their faith, Lord, as we study your, your word together. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is the first step to great faith. 
Maybe today you've been hearing this message and you're like, man, there's so many things that I would like to see God do in my life. Well, this is your opportunity. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, we can do so right now. And what exactly are you doing? Well, number one, he died for your sins. You're a sinner, okay? Um, and he died for your sins. He took your place. He paid the penalty for your sins so that you would never have to face judgment before God after you die. So he took the judgment, he took the penalty, he took everything that was against you, condemning you. And he, the Bible says he bore it on the cross. He took it away from you. But he only gives this forgiveness to those who put their trust in him. Outside of Christ, there is no forgiveness. In Christ, there is total forgiveness of your sins. Okay? And he gives you a new heart. He gives you the gift of faith so that you can believe him for everything else in your life. But most of all, you're going to receive salvation. Salvation from what? Salvation from uh, sin, the judgment that would come because of your sin, and eternity in hell, separated from God. So this is a big deal, okay? Your soul is on the line right now. And I'm going to make a really simple prayer. And in this prayer, you can repeat after me right where you are. And... If you do so, you're going to be saved. You ready? Pray with me. Lord Jesus, I surrender my heart to you, asking you to wipe away all my sins, forgive me for everything. And I open my life and my heart to receive you as my Lord and my Savior, believing that you died for me. You died for my sins. And from this day forward, I place my trust in you. I place my trust in you for my salvation and eternal life. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. God bless you. If you made that prayer for the first time, congratulations. Okay. Um, in the comment section below, make sure you uh, let me know that you made that prayer. Um, if there's any prayer requests, make sure you write there in the comment section. Um, give me a thumbs up. Okay, to show me that you care and subscribe because this is um, something that goes on every week. I'll be teaching little uh, bits and pieces of uh, the Word of God in the form of a Bible study. And I hope you can you know, participate every single week with me. Okay, uh, So make sure you subscribe so that way you know when the next lesson will be uploaded for you to um, enjoy. Okay, uh, Once again, my name is Pastor Aldo Souza. It was a pleasure to teach the Word of God to you today, and I will see you next week. God bless you. Amen.